Good morning. morning. Welcome to our Father's house. I am Mike LaRock, your lay leader, and I am joined in worship by our praise team, Lori, Ellie, and Rianne. Pastor Beth is attending her daughter's graduation today from UVA, and today also happens to be her birthday. We are continuing to collect supplies for the Ukraine, for Ukraine through the Tidewater Christian School, and there is a box that's blue and yellow right out there in the lobby that you can put your donations in. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and our focus is on the story of Jesus appearing on the road to Emmaus. Pastor Beth recorded her sermon in advance, and we'll be watching it, it on a, the monitor this morning, fingers crossed. <laughs> so please stand if you are able and for the invitation to worship. Lord of resurrection surprises, open our hearts this day to the presence of Jesus Christ. Erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge us to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us, leading and guiding our steps. In his name we pray, amen. amen. Let us sing our praises. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh
became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah. It's now time for our children's message with Miss Lori. Thank you for finishing it. Oh, be careful. Be careful with that mirror. That mirror is a very spe special mirror. Can you see yourself in it right now? Yeah. Whose hands are those? God. God's. So you see yourself right now in Jesus' hands. How awesome is that? They're not crystals. What, what was in the middle of Jesus' hands? They're the nail marks or when Jesus was nailed on the cross. Oh, yeah, you asked too? Oh, nice. Well, come on, let's slide down this way some. Can we slide down this way, friends? So, so we've been talking a lot about Jesus, and that's why we have our mirror over there. And we've been talking about Jesus as different people. Jesus as our teacher, who we learn from. Uh-huh, that's right. And, and who? 
uh, Jesus as God. We are actually going to talk about that a little bit more today. We also talked about Jesus as what? Our Savior. That's right. Jesus as our Savior who saves us from sin. And that candle is so when we start our service, we like to, we bring in the light of God. So this candle is lit as a reminder of the light of God. Of the light of God. And so we're inviting God into our worship when we light these candles. We have them in the main sanctuary too, but you'll always see us light a candle at our worship. Welcome, guys. Come on up. What does it remind you of? The light inside of all of us that's The light inside of all of us. You're exactly right. So we talked about Jesus as our teacher who teaches us stuff. Jesus as our friend who cares about us. Jesus as our savior who saves us. And today we're going to look at Jesus as our Lord. What does it mean for Jesus to be our Lord? What does it mean to be a Lord? Someone that will never leave you, even when you're in hard moments. That's a good one. What else do you guys think a Lord is? If you're, if we say Jesus is Lord, what is, you and Kaylee are Lords. Hmm. That's a good guess. I don't, I don't think that's exactly where we're going with this one, but that's a good guess. So when we're talking about Jesus as a Lord, a Lord is someone that has power, authority, someone that rules over something. So what does it mean if someone's ruling over something? If they tell us to do something, what do we, like a king. So if a king or a ruler is ruling over something and they tell us to do stuff, what are we supposed to do? Do it. That's right. So we have to do it. So when we're saying that Jesus is our Lord, we're saying that Jesus rules over our lives. And we follow what Jesus says. Now, and and our mommies and daddies, but our mommies and daddies teach us about God. And they follow Jesus, too. So we know by following them, we're also following Jesus. Jesus is the king of the world. That's right. And what does Jesus tell us to do? What's that thing that he... Love everybody no matter what. Love everybody no matter what. That's exactly right. And read the Bible and, and pray and be in relationship with God. And go to church every day. I think what he's saying is he wants us to be with God every day. And sometimes that's in the church building and sometimes that's in the church of the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. In the church of the world. So when we're talking about God being our Lord, we're talking about Jesus being our Lord, we're talking about how he rules over our lives and how we're supposed to follow and listen to him and love everyone, just like you said. So let's go ahead and turn to God in prayer now. Let's go ahead and fold our hands and bow our heads and thank God for Jesus being the Lord of our lives. So will you all repeat after me and congregation repeat after me too. Dear God, God, thank you so much. For your son, Jesus, Jesus, who is our Lord, Lord. help us us to follow him him and to listen listen to what he tells us to do. do. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. 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 We're going to head down to our kids' hall for our Christian formation time. You guys will uh, pick up your children down the hall. I think one Sunday we'll just have the children do the sermon with Lori, right? I, I, that wouldn't be fair to Lori, though, I think. This morning's gospel reading comes from Luke 6, 46 through 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? I'll show what is, it's like when someone comes to me, hears my words, and puts them into practice. It's like a person building a house by digging deep and laying the foundation on bedrock. When the flood came, the rising water smashed against the house, but the water couldn't shake the house because it was well built. But those who don't put into practice what they hear are like a person who built a house without a foundation. The flood water smashed against it, and it collapsed instantly. It was completely destroyed. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, 
for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Will you join your hearts? Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and lay claim to the words that come from your word. Lay claim to the words that I speak and lay claim to the meditations of our minds and hearts that in this time we might be more deeply transformed into your people. Amen. First, let me thank you for receiving my sermon today by pre-recorded video. This Sunday morning, I am in Charlottesville celebrating the graduation of my oldest daughter, Kate, from the University of Virginia. I wanted to continue to share in this important sermon series with you as we work through what it means to free Jesus and through all that we have learned in the last few years and the technological upgrades that you all have done here at Haygood, I can both be at graduation and be with you this morning virtually. Thanks be to God. Over the last three weeks, we've explored three different understandings of Jesus. We've talked about knowing Jesus as our teacher, as the one who teaches by parables and by servanthood. We've talked about Jesus as our friend who reaches out to us, wanting mutual relationship with us. And we've talked about Jesus as our savior, saving us right now, today, by inviting us into an ongoing relationship with him that leads us to healing and wholeness. Today, we turn to understanding Jesus as Lord, which can sometimes be a challenge for us because we don't live in a Dalton Abbey sort of world where there is a Lord of the manor. I want to begin by exploring what the term Lord meant in the context of scripture where it appears. In the Hebrew Bible, the word Lord means Adonai. The ancient Hebrew people believed that Yahweh, the name for God that means I am who I am, that Yahweh was too sacred to speak aloud. So in many instances, they used the term Adonai or Lord in scripture instead. In Jesus's time, the Greek for Lord was Kyrios. Literally, this meant the one who owns you. In a culture where masters owned slaves and husbands owned wives and children, this term of Lord had a strong connection to the Latin translation, dominus, from which we get the words like dominate and dominator. Our understanding of Lord in our own cultural context in the 21st century still holds the remnants of those Greco-Roman ideas of Lord as an owner or ruler who is at least vaguely bad. For instance, Lord Vader or Lord Voldemort. In the New Testament world, the Roman ruler was called by the title Lord, Kyrie Caesar. As New Testament scholar N.T. Wright shares, the emperor was the Kyrios, the Lord of the world, the one who claimed the allegiance and loyalty of subjects throughout his wide empire. In the midst of that cultural understanding of Lord, the simple early Christian confession, Jesus is Lord, that we find in Paul's letters, particularly in Romans, 1 Corinthians, and Philippians. That statement, Jesus is Lord, was revolutionary and made the early Christian movement a threat to political powers. Diana Butler Bass emphasizes that when slaves and women said that Jesus was Lord, they surely meant that now Jesus was their master, no matter the claims of earthly masters. Jesus does refer to himself as Lord several times in the Gospels, as in the text from Luke that we read today. He is also called Lord by his disciples and by strangers. The term Lord is found over 700 times in the New Testament, which Diana Butler Bass notes is a common enough use that contemporary readers seem to take it for granted. 
Yet curios was a startling word to describe a wandering, miracle-working rabbi. Calling Jesus Lord for the earliest Christians was subversive and empowering, a form of submission one could choose in a world of otherwise little choice, a way of life that resulted in finding oneself by giving oneself totally and unreservedly to this crucified Jewish peasant, Kyrios. With that background, we turn to our scripture today. In Luke's gospel, this scripture comes at the end of chapter 6, wrapping up Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, as opposed to Matthew's gospel, where it appears in the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus speaks from a mountain. The note on this text in my Wesley Study Bible sums up its central message. The true mark of discipleship is a life that reflects the Lordship of Christ. Now that we know a little bit more about what it means to call Jesus our Lord, perhaps we can explore this text a little more deeply. When we say we are submitting to Jesus as Lord, then we are, when we say we are giving ourselves freely to a path of following him, when we say that, then Jesus demands that we act. He doesn't suggest it. He doesn't encourage it. He demands it. He demands that we act in this scripture by building a house and by building it on the solid foundation that withstands the storms of life, not the foundation that will slip away like sand through our fingers. John Wesley offers a similar interpretation in his sermon upon our Lord's Sermon on the Mount, Discourse the 13th. He writes, that faith which hath not works, which doth not produce, both inward and outward holiness, which does not stamp the whole image of God on the heart and purify us as he is pure. That faith which does not produce the whole of the religion described in the foregoing chapters is not the faith of the gospel, not the Christian faith, not the faith which leads to glory. One of the hallmarks of our United Methodist faith is this marriage between what we believe, our inner piety, and how we act in the world. It is acting like a follower of Jesus and building our house on his solid rock that is the response to faith that Jesus demands. Even more than that, it is acting in response to Jesus that will enable us to build a faith that will withstand the storms of life. Storms happen to us all. Some are personal, marital struggles, mental illnesses within ourselves or those we are close to, job loss. Some storms are corporate storms we experience together, a pandemic, runaway inflation, or acts of domestic terrorism as we witnessed in Buffalo last weekend. As one scholar writes about this passage, the storms come, they are a part of life and take no account of whether one is good or evil, whether one is a committed Christian or a dedicated atheist. Storms do not pick and choose among good and evil people, but according to the text, they inevitably reveal the character of those to whom they come. If Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives, and Lord of the church, that we not only worship him, we do what he says. We anchor ourselves to him above all others. We build our house on the firm foundation. Even the well-built house will get a little battered by the storms. It might need to be rebuilt in some places or shored up with some new building technology that wasn't around back in the day. That's why the church continues to engage in reflection around the context of our ministry and the particular call that God has on our lives today so that we might live as Christ's disciples in our community and our world 
That is why in the coming months, our leadership team has decided that Haygood will be doing both a physical audit of our facility, but also a ministry audit of our ministries to look with fresh eyes at what we are doing, at where we are, and how God might be calling us anew. We want to make sure that our facilities and our ministries are best poised today to respond to the call of our Lord Christ to the church. This scripture might also encourage all of us to do our own individual ministry audit. We've all been through some storms in the last few years. How are we holding up as those who follow Jesus Christ? Are we indeed saying, I love you, Lord, and then following that with the actions that reveal to the world that our house is built upon the rock of Christ, a rock that is a living wellspring for our lives today. What has changed in our world, in our church, in our hearts that might invite us into new responses to Christ? Jesus invites us this day and always to believe with our hearts and to enact with our lives the truth that he and he alone is Lord of all creation. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your gifts to Haygood continue to make a difference. And over the past few weeks, we have collected over $2,900 in donations for the Appalachia Service Project, including $670 yesterday at a very extremely hot car wash. You may give your financial gifts to Haygood online in the offering bowl in the lobby by dropping them off to the office or mailing a check back to us. As the praise band sings, you are invited to the community prayer board in the back and also to write a name you call Jesus at the station in the back of the social hall as we make a collage together.
Dear Heavenly Father, may we honor your name, not by paying it lip service, Lord Jesus, but by trusting the vision it speaks of the way it calls forth. May we honor it by following you, speaking into the word with our actions and showing who we're chosen to follow. May we love in your name, speak in your name, care in your name, that willingness to touch the outcast, feed the hungry, remember the sick, Visit the imprisoned, clothe the naked, give water to the thirsty. We ask for your prayers for Ellie as she leaves tomorrow to spend the summer on staff as part of the Appalachian Service Project. We ask you to keep Pete Kundrat in your prayers. And we ask for safe travels back home for Pastor Beth. We pray all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, Glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join us as we sing our commitment, the joy of the Lord. <laughs> the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. The joy.
Ebenezer is, means rock. So we had, let's continue to build our lives and our church upon that rock. May you leave here today with the joy of the Lord in your heart and a smile on your face. And all God's children said, amen. Joy